Dr. Schuft. I'm Martin Frank, and this is um, the entrance to Schuft, Germany. We are situated in Epstein. Unfortunately, we can't be with you at the moment due to COVID, but we hope to give you a bit of an introduction to what we're doing for you here in Germany. Good morning, and let me show you what we have in the workshop at the moment. So over here, we have an order for delayed coaching at the moment, and you can see here uh, one of our switch plugs. We have two of them, and they are the valves, of course, that uh, determine which of the coaching drums is being used at any one time. And here we have idle plugs, which uh, seal. to be two to three bar above process pressure, but no more than seven bar 
as not to cut the sealing surfaces. If you would like to purge the body cavity while the process medium is flowing through the valve or when the valve is closed, you can use a second line of defense, the dead space free ram valve. Ensuring the plug is seated, the ram valve can be opened, causing the steam to swirl in the body, down through the hollow plug, and out the ram valve. This ram valve can also be used to flush condensate out of the line if it is sat idle for a while or as a cooling in a thermally bound scenario. Should you find the valve in a situation where solids have entered the body cavity due to lack of steam, maybe, then the third line of defense can be used. Ensure that the process is not running and steam has been removed from the valve. This will allow you to drop the bottom plate about 18 inches and lift the plug manually to have the ability to hydroblast the body cavity, plug, and seat. Greg Anderson here to talk about shear sample valves. Basic threaded NPT connections, wafer styles for pipe integration, and a wide range of alloys available, such as these nickel based valves with contoured nozzles and PTFE adapters. Other specialty sampling for dry media, such as powders and pellets. This is a fixed sampler with a hollow ram. The ram extends, collecting the sample before retracting. Other, more difficult powders or pellets can utilize the auger style. The piston extends into the sample stream. The auger collects the sample, continues to operate, as the valve closes, placing the sample into the chamber. We also can integrate flanges into our sample valves with special features such as double packing the lantern rings and flushing ports. Many sample valves adapted to your special requirements. Hello, this is Greg Anderson with Shoop USA. I'm here to discuss the Shoop sample system with isolation integrated into the design as seen here. This sample design is for continuous operating systems with difficult media such as coke resid, slurries, heavy oil, or asphalt teams. The isolation point gives the user the capability to remove the sample valve for routine maintenance without disruption of operations. For sampling, the RAM valve opens through the ball valve. After collection, the RAM valve closes. During maintenance periods, the process can be isolated with the ball valve, as seen here. Then, the sample valve can be removed for servicing. Thank you for your attention. Hello and welcome to Show Federal. Today we're going to demonstrate a 30 inch cam set lime blind valve. Typically, a line of 30 inches in a petrochemical or chemical complex would be blinded using a paddle blind, a spectacle plate, or a figure of eight. And in order to do that, you would require five workers, a crane, and it typically takes two to three days' time to complete. The cam set can achieve this in under two minutes by one operator from one side of the valve. We'll start the demonstration. First of all, we'll start the stopwatch. The first step is to actuate the valve. This releases the cam mechanism inside the valve and unlocks the plate. Second step is to remove the locator pin. And then very simply, with the assistance of the counterweight, the blind is moved from its open position to closed. Finally, the plate is locked back into position by turning the handwheel. 
keep in mind, this takes two to three days. I have five operators and the use of a crane under normal circumstances. And this operation is achieved in 51 seconds. It's just better off camp set. The design principle behind our blind is the internal cam system. This prevents the need to separate piping flanges. In addition, the adjacent piping does not move when the blind is changed. No pipe stresses. To operate, simply depressurize and bleed the process line. Turn the handle or hex nut so the cam will slide down the inclined plane, allowing enough space for the spectacle to be flipped. Then turn the handle or hex nut, again causing the cam to ride up the inclined plane, tightening the seal. Shoop offers many variations of blinds, facey, cam fit, cam slide, goggle, and other variations. These blinds can be customized to your operational needs, from strainers and spectacle plate, to interchangeable orifice plates, and rupture discs. High temperature and fire safe versions are available. Hello, I'm David Callahan of Shoop USA. I'm here today to talk about the Shoop diverter valve. We, our diverter valves can combine one common inlet flow to two outgoing flows, or we can combine two incoming flows to one outlet flow. You can use our diverter valves for pump bypass and filter change out. We can have as many outlets as you'd like, three, four, five, six, eight. We can install contoured and rotating ramps to eliminate dead space and have gentle transitions through the flow path of the inside of the valve. You can get any actuator you like, air, electric, hydraulic, manual. You can get any pipe orientation you'd like. The inlet on the top, one outlet on the side, the other one coming out the bottom. You can get any material, carbon, stainless, Inconel, Monel, Astaloy, titanium. We do all sizes and all pressure classes. Thank you very much. So thanks for joining the presentation. I'm going to look at our diverter valve range. Start by looking at the basic concept what an actual diverter valve does. So commonly to split lines, you would have an arrangement of uh, a T-piece and then isolation valves, be them ball valves or gate valves or plug valves, but there you have a problem with what we term as dead space, where products can settle and solidify and this can then cause problems when trying to operate the valve again. With the diverter valve, what you have is a valve which closes flush with the inlet line. So there is no dead space, it's completely eliminated. For example, this is a typical overview of a upgrading unit where you have a com um, product coming off the reactor, going through different stages of separation all the way down to vacuum distillation. And where diverter valves are interesting are between the different uh, stages. So coming off the high pressure to mid pressure separator, from mid to atmospheric, and from atmospheric to vacuum distillation, where you are splitting into multiple lines. That's what's indicated there with the red arrows. So here's an example coming off the high pressure separator. You've got one in four out. This indicates what's in each of the Four outlet lines. You have an angle valve, then a light down valve, and then a, another isolation valve before the downstream mid pressure separator. And here, a little bit uh, of a more basic overview where you can see how the valves are joined up together with the diverter on the top coming off the separator, then the angle block valve, and the, a flushing valve between the angle block and the control valve or the light down valve and the light down valve to the mid pressure separator. And here the valves shown in situ. Bottom left picture shows the diverter valve coming off the bottom of the separator. It can also be seen a little bit enlarged on the right, bottom right hand side. And then from this diverter valve, you have the four lines, which if you look at the top right, you have in the right angle, that's where the 
play time valves are located. And these uh, diverter valves then can be incorporated into a skid. So you have a, a uh, like a, a let down skid, which is a fully finished solution, can be used for like a plug and play almost. So here is uh, indicating just the layout where you have uh, the three way valve as the inlet going to downstream angle valve for isolation, which are then feeding into the let down valve. In this case, we show our two in one let down valve, which has uh, two trims in one valve and downstream then secondary isolation valve. And these can then be mounted onto a, a frame so that they can be transported and installed. Other valves offered by SHU include, but aren't limited to, the automatic recirculation valve, or ARV. This is a multifunctional valve whose primary purpose is to ensure that a predetermined minimum flow is provided through a centrifugal pump at all times. The true E plug is our double block and bleed valve, and it offers two independent seals. This is great for tank farms and bike lines. The rising stem ball valve provides friction free operation created by tilting the ball off the seat prior to rotation. This valve is used in services like ammonia and LNG, as well as emulsive. This valve is offered in a wide variety of materials and is available in both soft and metal seals. Actuation can be manual or automated. Our blowdown valves are available in two configurations, Y globe or angle. The operation can either be intermittent or continuous flow. And control characteristics can either be linear or equal percentage. Tandem units are also available. Stop check valves combine backflow prevention valve with an isolation valve. This is achieved by tightening the stem into the disc, which inhibits the disc from checking. To reinstate the checking function, just turn the hand wheel to back the stem out of the disc. Our changeover valve is used mainly with redundant safety relief valves or rupture discs. One side is completely isolated while the other is in operation. Switching from one side to the other through an open cavity ensures that the process flow is never blocked during discharge 100% of time. Multi-port selector valves are used to collect multiple oil or gas lines from the field while still offering the ability to isolate a single stream from sampling. These valves can be provided in single units or skin. My name is Nick Frank, co-owner and CEO of SHU. I would like to thank you for visiting our booth and trust you have had an informative and enjoyable experience. I also hope we've been able to convince you of our application expertise and product designs. If we can be of further help, please don't hesitate to contact our team or specialists at SHU USA. Please stay safe and we hope to see you in person again soon.